everyone, welcome back to another video. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe. We use every Wednesday, sometimes Friday, and always on Sunday. So, tonight, it's not today, it's tonight. Um, we are doing a long way to Q&A video. This is my fiance Katie here. And she's helped me read out the questions because there's a lot of questions that people want to know. I put it, I put it up on Instagram and on YouTube. People are asking me the past two years I've been doing this, well, probably a year and a half. So many questions, I never got around to doing a Q&A and I'm finally doing one. So there's lots of questions to get through. Some are a bit weird, some are just general questions. Some people, there's about, some people keep, keep asking the same questions over and over again. <laughs> and there's one or two strange ones, but anyway, we won't get into them. Yeah. So anyway, get to the first one. Hopefully this answers some questions for people. Hopefully some people get something out of this video. I don't know whether they're not, who knows. Anyway, let's crack on. So that's the first question there, Katie. Why didn't you use your hedge cutter to cut under the wire instead of strimmer? Why didn't I do that? Um, number one, um, I see what you mean, yeah. Um, number one, the reason I didn't do that is because that part of the land, I couldn't get the hedge cutter up to it. Uh, it's a, by the time I would have the hedge cutter on and down the small road up to that place, I would have had the strimming done. It's just too tight and it's not our ground rented and we have to do some more we have to do some work on it at some stage with the track machine and we just haven't done it so it's just awkward to get it up there and that's why i didn't really do it to be honest it's just it was easier to trim it so yeah that's the answer to that one so on next one are you going to the all ireland on sunday i know exactly who said that question and yes i am so if the person is watching yes i am going to the all ireland so yeah on to the next one. Um, you look oh, a bit tired. I look a bit tired. I'm always tired. <laughs> <laughs> I get home, I get up early, I get home late, I go to bed late. So yeah, it's not a good combination, but that's the life of a farmer, a traditional YouTuber at the moment anyway. So I'm happy, it's the main thing. Next one. Yeah. When would you think of upgrading the tractors? Uh, upgrading the tractors, never, never. Once we buy a tractor, they stay. They're all part of the family. Call, call it weird, but once they stay, they're all part of the family. The only thing I might do with them is refurbish them, but they'll never, they'll never be upgraded. Never. Okay. How no many interest. cows have you? We have 60 cows milking. Mm -hmm. um, next one, tractor and machinery tour question mark. That will happen. I'm planning to do a machinery tour and a farmyard tour, so that will all happen. So just keep keep an eye out but I will get to that and I'm getting to that very soon because I want to I haven't had time to do one at the moment so up until now but now I have a bit more time in my hands since AI's going on quiet so yeah I will do one differently. Okay how do you juggle being an AI technician and milking cows as well? I have a great family at home that's the reason I have a great family at home they all help out that's the main reason. Will you ever upgrade the milking parlour? Will I ever get a big part? Yes, I will. Yeah, we have plans to do that at some stage. It's not priority at the moment. There's more things that we I have on my list to do. The parlor at the moment is good. Um, cow number suited, 60 cows suited at the moment. And as we, we're not sure, I'm not sure how many cows I'll go to, but at the moment, the parlor's doing the job fine. So we will upgrade it at some stage, but not for now. Would you ever consider to get a Ford or New Holland? <laughs> Oh, Ford or Holland? Well, Ford haven't been made anymore. Uh, yeah, we have two Fords. Um, we always, my granddad always had Fords going back way back. He always had them. Um, yeah, New Holland. We have New Holland teleporter as far as it goes, really. Would I buy New Holland? Eh, probably not. Sorry. Don't really have much hack for them, really. If I, I know Case at the same, but if I was buying, if I choose between Case and New Holland, I'd probably go for the red paint first. That's just me. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, what are your top tips for a prospective new entrant to dairy farming? Oh, uh, my my, geez, I, um, my top tips. Um, don't borrow too much money from the bank. Keep it simple. Start small. Buy in the best animals that you can, the best stock, the highest DPI. I think, you know, that return some profit. And just keep it simple, keep it small. Up, slowly scale up don't go head first deep don't borrow a lot of money and go head first into it because that's not i don't, I don't think that's worth it and some people do that and i don't think that's worth it so just keep it simple and stay handy and upgrade slowly yeah mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> like cheese 
I love cheese. I'm a dairy farmer. What do you expect? <laughs> what dairy farmer wouldn't like cheese? <laughs> Grated or sliced? <laughs> Both. Okay. Who the hell is that? Yeah, <laughs> God. Um, plans for the future and what you would like to change in, on the farm? Plans for the future are just um, keep up building, you know, increase cow numbers, increase infrastructure on the farm, like sheds and land and things. Do I, do I want to change anything? Not really, really change anything, really. Just add more stuff on. I don't, but the system we have is good, you know, and going in the right direction, I think. So I don't really want to change anything. I just want to increase farm size, really. That's all. I don't want to change the system. The system's good. So I'm happy with that. So just plans for the future are just to uh, keep doing what we're doing and do it right and keep, make, keep making sure that the farm isn't going to be profitable for years to come. Okay. Next one, are you rich? Am I rich? I know exactly who asked that as well. No, I'm not rich. We're just very hardworking people. So thank you for the person who asked that question. <laughs> I know exactly who it was. Okay, uh, are you finding the new ear tags? You, um, how, oh, how are you finding the new ear tags you purchased? Sense Hub, yeah, um, they're brilliant. I'm very happy with them. They made my life so much easier. Like, come back to the AI technician question. <clears throat> God, they made my life so much easier. You know, you got all the heat into the phone, health alerts, anything, everything. They're just, I think they're a no-brainer for a farmer, really. Now, they're not for everyone. They suit, they suit me, what I'm doing. But I think every farmer sh over 50, 60 cows should have a farm management system like that. They're a great job. Can't fault them. Really do recommend them. Okay. Um, someone says, could you post more of the voucher at 8450? <laughs> Yeah, I think everyone likes the 850. Um, yeah, she's a she's a beast. In fairness to her, yeah. Um, a few plans for her over the next couple of years now. Uh, we have a few bits to do to it. I explained the brakes have to be done, redone, missing two bits like that. So, yeah, I will post some pictures of the 850. Um, she's kind of finished for the year. She's her mowing, done on all that. So, yeah, we'll post bits and pieces of it. But there's a few videos I want to do with it. So, yeah, I will post more of it. Um, would you stop working the AI if you increased stock size about 150? Um, I don't think we'll ever have 150 anyway. I doubt it. Um, unless a lot of land came available to us. Um, I don't think I want to be that number to be honest. I think I don't think one man could handle that. And you know, I don't really want to be hiring outside labour to be honest with you too much. Um, yeah, definitely. If I went over a certain number of cows, I probably would give up AI. I'd, I'd, I'd probably have to, even though I wouldn't want to. I, don't, I, I do love the job, but you know, sometimes you just have to bite the bullet and give up something you love too. But we'll see. We'll see what the future holds. I'm happy doing what I'm doing for now. Okay. Would you ever get a rotary parlor? Um, if I was making over 200 cows, yeah, I would get a rotary parlor. If I was making probably over 200. I think one, they're just a no-brainer because they're so labour efficient. I'll probably never have rotary powder, being honest. Pity, but I probably never, <laughs> I probably never will. But if I was making a big number of cows, that would be definitely, I'd get a Dillaval or a Dairy Master rotary powder, definitely, yeah. What are the key things to achieve a high conception rate at breeding? Uh, probably big one for me, body condition score, make sure the cows have enough energy going into them all the time. Not make sure they aren't too overweight, that, that's this is bad. Uh, make sure the cows have enough energy, make sure they don't have enough meal, make sure that they have enough grass in front of them, make sure you're feeding a good fertility nut, um, just making sure you do AI, when you're doing AI, make sure you're doing it clean, you're not bringing any dummy mature or anything, make sure just keep everything clean and keep everything simple. Do you know, even simple things, like I, th I think simple things like having a good crush helps. No stress in the animals. Every the long, small things help, but definitely body condition score and energy for the cows is a big one for me always. And just making sure you, get, you all have all your vaccinations up to date. If you have any, if you have any disease problems or anything, make sure like like IBR or lepto, make sure that you've all that thing sorted before you start. But yeah, just keep it simple. Make sure the cows have enough energy and drive on from there. Okay. Next one. Are you doing videos? I am doing videos. I don't think that person realised I was doing videos, but I am doing videos. <laughs> I'm talking to one right now. So it's that person. Yeah, I am doing videos. The link is in my bio on my Instagram. So yeah, because all these questions come in from Instagram. So yeah, I am doing videos. 
So why did you choose Valtra over all of your other brands? Um, don't ask my dad that. Um, I don't know really. Um, I remember he, he tells me the story sometimes. Um, he went to see, uh, like I said, we always had Fords. Um, and my dad was buying his first tractor, the, the, the 900. She's 20, that's to which she's the year, she was bought in the year 2000. Brand new, so um, he went to see a few second hand Ford 7 8 10s, which they would have been probably 10 years old at the time, not really much doing with them. And you know, he went to see a case CX90 as well, so we could have been all case as well. It's just so funny how you know, because my dad would have stuck with the brand, so we could have been all case, we would have had all cases as well, do you know, or we would have had all um, New Holland's. He went to see New Holland's, working like the TL 100s or TL 90, so it's just well, whatever my dad would have bought, he would have probably stuck with. Because that's how kind of how he is. He's just stick with the one brand, like you know. And um, yeah, went to see the case, the New Holland. Uh, I think went to see a John Deere as well. I think at the time, probably would have had all John Deere, but he just like he just rattled the Valtra over them all. He thought it was a bit better, and he bought the Valtra, and so here we are. So that's that reason, yeah. Okay, I think someone else asked this. Would you? Will you be doing a video on all the machinery? I will. I will. I will. Yeah, I'll get to that. Soon, very soon, in, in the next month or two. Yeah. Okay, next question. I think you actually answered the first part. How many cows are you milking and how many replacement heifers do you keep? 60 cows and this year we have 15 replacement heifers because I'm, we're trying to, um, some people would argue probably more than 60 cows, but I'm trying to increase a bit as well. So, you know, I have I, I had 13 last year, I have 15 this year, so we're trying to get a few more every year. Like, so yeah, I'd have about, I'd have over 15, I'd run 15 or over every year. How many tractors do you have? Uh, at the moment we have five Baltras and we have the two Fords, that's what we have, but they're like the 40,000 scripts, the R6, 666 doesn't really do much. It's okay. kind of a project I'm working on at the moment, so yeah, that's what we have. Um, your favourite model of Valmets? Favourite model of Valmets? Um, my own favourite tractor at home is probably the 6350, the blue belt with the loader. You see, that's my favourite, all of my home is my favourite. Um, 6350, there is, a, there was a Valtra 6850, same, same layout as that, but she had 140 horsepower and a four cylinder engine. That would be my all time favourite one. So if I ever came across one of them, definitely, that's so rare, because they have front linkage just standard too, I think. So if ever one of them came up, I would definitely, Love to look at it because they're just, I think they were a great tractor at the time. So I have a 6850, but a 6850 I would love. They're just meant to be a great machine, apparently. So yeah, but they're old now, but still, they're just meant to be a great machine. Mm -hmm. What's the next purchase on the farm? <laughs> yeah, next purchase on the farm? I don't know. Who knows what the future holds? We've enough spent now at the moment, I think, but uh, probably just sheds and things like that infrastructure, farm roadways, receding on kind of thing. Just general stuff. I've no more machinery. I personally have no more machinery to buy. Might have one bit of machinery that I want to buy up in the next year or two. Just something that would benefit me, but it's nothing big like, but um, after that, it's just general farm stuff really. That's all. Will you ever buy a dribble bar? Yeah, I will buy a dribble bar at some stage. Yeah, I've been looking into them. I've been doing some research on them. Uh, probably look now when I go to the ploughing probably this year if like if, if we can make it or the Tullamore show I'll probably look at them there just to see but definitely no definitely that's in the pipeline definitely yeah. Mm -hmm. Would you ever consider buying a Massey Ferguson? A Massey Ferguson? Would I ever consider buying a Massey Ferguson? Well you have to look at the you have to look at the one side of it they are they have a Valtra engine they are similar made similar to Valtra now because they're both half and half uh, I suppose if I couldn't get a Valtra, if, if I was buying a Valtra new and couldn't get one, and but say, let's say, ironically, if relationships with Valtra fell away, it probably would be the weird way to look at the same engine. Now, would I, could I see myself driving Massey Ferguson? Mm. No, no, I could not see myself. I couldn't picture my head in a Massey Ferguson. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have to be pictured in it, and I, no, Massey Ferguson. They're, don't worry, don't be wrong. I have a friend, he's a few of them, they're great trackers, like they're great machines, but no, I just wouldn't be interested in one of them really, to be honest with you. Next one, who is your favourite sister? 
I know what sister put that in and no favourites, love them all equally. I'm just leaving that at that. <laughs> no favourites. <laughs> when did you get the tea series? Uh, we had the tea since 2018. Yeah. Perfect. What beef system is the most profitable in Ireland today? I thought about that one a lot. Um, I didn't know how to answer it really. I not like I'm more of a dairy farmer. We keep all the calves and rear them to to be we finish them. Um, I don't know really. I didn't know how to answer that. Um, there's so many different beef systems, there's sucklers and <sighs> I suppose bull beef is probably a profitable one. Maybe it is calf to beef. With calf to beef was never really profitable. Dairy calf to beef. But the profit, the margins this year, there's more price for cattle. It is profitable, but the price of meat is killing it. The price of ration is killing it. So I don't know, honestly, I don't know what's profitable in beef, to be honest. Like dairy is always seen as the profitable lent dairy farming enterprise, but look, I don't know how profitable beef is really at the moment. I know my own system works for us, but if I was a genuine beef farmer, I couldn't, I just couldn't tell you really. I can't answer that question, to be honest. Okay. Where is the Ford 66? Ford 66 is in the machinery shed at the moment. Um, it's just a project I'm working on, so we'll probably do a few videos. Uh, probably will do a few, a few videos on that o over the years, so just keep an eye out. Mm -hmm. Last question. How many silage bales do you make on average? How many silage do we make on average? Um, we make about, depends, probably a thousand every year. We probably so many left from last year, so. We probably would have over a thousand every year, probably. So that last question. Mm -hmm. God. First Q&A, guys. Um, if anyone has any more questions, feel free to ask. I might do a few more of these up in the future um, because people seem to like doing them and they seem to want to know lots about me, which is pretty... That's uh, the thing that I'm at now. Some people want to know what's going on. Like I said, I will do the farm yard tour and the machinery tour. People, a lot of people want to know about the history of the farm and you know, they want to know when it all started and where it is now and why, how old are all the buildings and all that. So people want to know all about that. So I will get to all that at some stage. But for now, that's the Q&A. Um, that's us done for the night, I think. Mm -hmm. so thanks for watching, guys. Um, I'll see you all in the next video. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>